delighted to be joined by Mr. Matt Mitchell of Pussifer. Man, it's been a while. How have you been? Been great, thank you. And yourself? Yeah, good. Good, man. I'm delighted to be talking to you because I heard the new record last night. Um, late night. It felt like a good time to be playing the record late right at on. night. Um, can I ask, was this record written during lockdown? Because I have to ask, because the video was so... Uh, the first video to be released was so felt so lockdown centric. I had right. to wonder if was the was the music written during this period or prior to it. So we started prior. We started, um, I guess, about a year ago, kind of really locking down ideas. Um, the first single, so the apocalyptical track, was just one of those. You know, we were all locked down, and Maynard was like, uh, "This thing's kind of resonating right now." Why don't we finish it up and put it out? So it was a track that was that had existed. Um, and then we just kind of made a video that worked with what was what we were all dealing with at the time. And uh, yeah, and just, just, you know, for for good or for bad, the timing <laughs> was right. Did it did it uh, pro did it change in any way your approach to how you were putting this out, if you were going to put it out. Like, it's been such a weird period of time, and I've spoken to so many artists putting their music out in what is comfortably the weirdest part of human history that we've been a part of. Sure. Um, like, was there, a, was there lengthy discussion about whether to put this out during this period, or was it just like, nah, fuck it? Yeah, I mean kind of impossible to you know it's a it's a moving target right so it's been impossible to kind of figure out what's going on and you know what 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 we're supposed to do so we just did what we thought we should do and just get it out and then you know the the real discussions and questions have been in uh touring and how 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 we um you know can we play shows when can we play shows you know, moving dates back and back and back. And, um, you know, what else can we do to kind of, you know, present the record to the fans? And, you know, so, so most of the, most of the discussion hasn't been about, should we release it, but more of what do we do? How do we change the plan, you know, with the current state of things? Yeah. The, like the weirdest thing for me with your particular band releasing, music in this period is Pussifer's music is so club ready like when you when I, when you look at the the uh, maybe it says more about the kind of clubs that I go to Matt but <laughs> but it feels like the music of Pussifer is rump shaking music sure and when we're all kind of confined to our couch does that does you think does it do you do you even think about how people consume the music or is it just a case of this is the art that we're making people can fucking take it however they take it? <laughs> uh, it's definitely the latter. I mean, I, yeah. I, um, I like to just, you know, for me, writing it's it's I. I don't know. I, I think about what inspires me and what makes me feel good and what you know, what kind of things I'm listening to to get me through whatever time I'm in, you know? So if anything, it's, it's more of a subconscious transfer of, you know, whatever's happening in, in my head. Um, yeah, it, it's, um, I don't know. I've always liked, you know, I, I don't think of myself as, you know, I, I don't like going to dance clubs and I don't like, that kind of stuff, but I love music that that um, you know that is emotional, that feels that feels good. You know, that's like there's a groove to it, and and um, you know, beat driven stuff. I've always been, you know, I've always gravitated towards. So it's kind of expected that it would end up that way. And what do you think that existential reckoning says about what you were listening to? Where do you say that your subconscious starts slipping things through into your music? Because there is some, it's a seductive kind of record, I, th I think. But like the things that caught my ear, it's fucking great because I spend my entire time talking to rock and metal bands. So I don't get to go, there's some fucking weird guitar licks that remind me of the fine young cannibals in there. What the fuck? <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, the guitar stuff was, for me, when I, guitar is kind of one of the, well, the hooky guitar parts are kind of one of the last things that I add, because for me, that's the, that becomes the thread for me in the music of how you kind of tie things together. Um, there's, there's guitar parts that, you know, are fundamental early on kind of chordal things. Um, the keyboard stuff, I like, I don't know. I, I gravitate towards the weirdest stuff that I can make or the weirdest stuff that I can find The stuff that when I say weird, I mean more like that. I feel like I haven't heard it before or it's it feels really unique and then just trying to hone it in and turn it into melodies and make it listenable and make it, uh, you know, unique and, and cool. Is there anything that you've done on this record that you haven't done on previous Pussifer records in terms of the studio? Because no one in amongst the three of you is going to be comfortable just shitting out the same old, like, oh, it's just another Pussifer record, here you go. How have, right. you, cha- how have you challenged yourself on this record? Um, one of the big challenges for me on this record was the gear. Um, I bought a few things that were, that I wanted to kind of be signature to this record for me, just kind of being techie and, you know, as a little kid, just whatever toy I got, I disassembled it and had to put it back together. And so that's kind of where my head comes from. So from a musical point, it was finding instruments that were, um, just unfamiliar territories for me. Um, things like the Fairlight and things like, uh, Synclavier and just kind of classic, you know, eighties computers, like really weird. Uh, I don't know, weird, but, um, esoteric, I guess, in, in today's kind of usage. So finding, finding tools that, that, um, were a challenge to learn how to, you know, learn the language to be actually, actually be able to use the tool. And then, um, yeah, and then just being inspired by the the stuff that comes out of it and how unique it is, and um, I don't know. I mean, there's so much out there. You, you know, you you open Ableton, and there's so much there. You know, there's so much that you can do. Um, but I feel like I don't know. I, this has kind of happened for for forever. Like. Whatever the new tool is, not that Ableton's a new tool by any means, but whatever the kind of latest tool is, everything kind of starts to sound like that for a period, you know, and then there's the new thing and then everything kind of sounds like that for a period. Yeah. So it was trying to, you know, not not shun that stuff, definitely using that stuff, but also mixing it with, you know, peppering it with things that, that maybe people aren't super familiar with. Um, you know, everyone... Everyone has the Moog, you know, or, uh, you know, access to, you know, those types of vintage things. But I don't know a ton of people necessarily that are, that are using some of the early computer stuff. So that's kind of where I wanted to go with it. And is there, and it, when you say about the excitement comes from gear, something that's fascinating to me is when you're pulling things from like more esoteric things, things that fall uh, in the 80s as an era, um, the record still sounds hyper modern. So yeah. as, as someone who's a gear nerd, is it about the taking something from the past and crunching it against what's going on right now and how you do how you make that part of the push of the sound exactly so yeah so when i'm using an old thing i'm not trying to make it sound like the guys did when they were doing it back then i'm trying to make it yeah i'm crunching it into what what's happening now and what is resonating with me now and how does your um how does your relationship with your vocalist in Pussifer, how does that differ to when you do other things with him? Because you've worked with Maynard for a while. I've got to say, when we did our last interview was uh, before Fear Inoculum had come out. And yeah. whenever I was bumping into anyone, even remotely close to the tool camp, like, I could be talking to you about the most interesting shit ever, and all I want to do is grab everyone by the ears and go, tell me about the new album, you fucks. <laughs> um, how does how does Pussifer... Uh, change your dynamic with Maynard as opposed to other things that you've worked on him with? So, yeah, I mean, 
well, this one, it's, it's, you know, I'm, I'm doing a lot of the music or most of the music. So, so I get to be super creative when I'm, when I'm working with him on other projects, I get to have a creative a little bit, a little sprinkle, but it's not my thing. So I need to be respectful that it's someone else's thing and just kind of try to try to make it as good as it can be without really leaving a mark on it, you know, without, mm. without being heavy handed. Um, in terms yeah. of that, in terms of that personal relationship though, like the, the, when you're recording the, the moments that the magic are created, like, it, that's got to be different because even verbalizing to someone like when it's your baby as opposed to when it's someone else's like is that just not how you work as people you communicate the same way all the time or yeah. does it change it's right pretty, pretty much the same um uh and you know and and working when i'm when we're working on things like vocals i'm kind of staying out of the way anyway because I know that, it, it, you know, he's, he's, he, I, I, me interjecting what I think about it is just getting in the way. Cause I know that, that whatever he's going to do, it, you know, he's got a path and he wants to see that path through. And then if that path needs to be tweaked and we're going to go do it again, then, you know, I trust his process and I trust, you know, w- where he wants to take it. I think me interjecting, whether it's Pussifer or whether it's one of these other projects, me interjecting is just a, it, it's just in the way. It's like, get out of my way. I'm, I'm doing something. I hear you. So, I hear you. Or it's more staying out of the way and letting him do his thing. So it's the same, you know, whether it's this band or that band or that band, it's, it's, you know, with him specifically, it's staying out of the way. And, you know, uh, and certainly, certainly I'll poke, poke my head up if there's something that's like, that's really cool. Or that thing, that you did back there was really cool just to kind of, you know, you know, maybe, maybe just give a little bit of feedback, but yeah, but for the most part, I stay out of the way. See that that's fascinating to me because I mean, I'll ask about the crazy stuff as well, but the, the, is it generally you're, you're given like, this is the vocal line and and melodic trait that we're going with? Or are there are there frequently multiple uh, routes that you can go? Like, uh, so I'm always fascinated by the creative process in something as unique as Pussifer because that guy's got his bunch of stuff that he's done. Karee's got the stuff that she's done. You've got the stuff that you've done. But just as a as a collective for this particular project, this shit fascinates me. Right on. Yeah, I mean. You know, in the same vein that that I stay out of his lane, you know, I stay out of Karina's lane. They stay out of my lane. It's like that's one of the things that I think is really cool about this project is that we, you know, and I, is that we all respect what we're bringing to the table, and we all know that that once we sort through it, it's going to be something that we're all happy with. So we just kind of stay out of the way and let each other, you know, do our part. Ah, because it, it's fascinating that... Do you think that that makes you work faster? Because speed was definitely something that was regularly on the lips of interviewees when it comes to other work. Do, right. Like, do you, do you think... You, is, is, is efficiency part of the gig when it comes to Pussifer? I think so. I mean, when, it, when, we, when we put our foot down, when the first vocal is written that's kind of the starting you know to me that's when the race starts and then it's like and then we're all just grinding um but until then it's it's you know i'm constantly you know when we when we finish an album cycle or actually when we when we start a tour cycle is when i start kind of throwing ideas together and that's kind of my leisure period where you know in a dressing room or before a flight or whatever it's it's coming up with new ideas and kind of stockpiling stuff in Dropbox and then and then like I said once 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 the focus becomes hey let's work on stuff and I've got a I've got an idea for that song you yeah. know and once once we kind of put pen to paper on that first idea then it's then we're all like okay we're in we're doing it and then it's and then it's literally a mad dash to to get it done 
And when it comes to this particular record, the artwork um, and the times that we're living in, um, do you, was it important to make a record for these times particularly? Like, everyone knew what was on the horizon for November here in the US. Yeah. Um, I don't think anybody could have predicted uh, quite how mental this summer has been. Um, but is it impossible to not write art that is influenced by the times at the moment? Even when you're, even when musically you're going to the well with like aesthetic and eighties instruments and all those kind of things, sure. it's very much a record about the times. Is that fair? Um, I, I don't know that it's a record about the time specifically, but, but you know, when you're living in it, you can't help but be influenced by it. So, you know, I, I don't think any of us are sitting down going, we're going to kind of focus on this thing or that thing. I think it's it's bigger ideas than kind of what we're dealing with at the moment. I think, you know, not really to speak to, to Maynard's lyrics, but I think it's more bigger picture lyrically. Mm -hmm. um, and then and then musically for me, like I said earlier, it's it's. Um, it's the reactions of the things that are going on around you that, that are influencing it. Not that we're sitting down saying, Hey, let's do this kind of thing or that kind of thing. Mm. Do you feel like outsiders like even to this day as Pussifer? Cause when you play on festival bills, there's nothing like you. Right. <laughs> and, and when I think like who could tour with Pussifer, maybe my, maybe my, pool of influences is too shallow but i'm like who the fuck could go on the road with this do you feel right. like fish out of water when when you create the art or do you or do you feel like you fit in with other other uh darker electronic artists yeah um i mean certainly on on certain festivals when you're sitting backstage you know or you you go to catering and you're like i i don't know, you know like, yeah how is this going to work? Um, yeah, I mean, so, sometimes, but, you know, I, 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 I mean, there's a lot of bands that I like, so I, I would think that, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I mean, as, as an artist, I just try to do what feels organic and not, try not to think about it too much and yeah. then deal with the repercussions later. Um, you know, and, and ho hopefully they resonate with people and, you know, I, th I, th I think the reason why I ask questions like that is because where you're, you're, each of you are known for more rock centric projects, this not being a rock centric project, it's right. always kind of, it's weird to know where it lands. Like, like a, a million tall obsessive, sure. But outside, outside of that, like, who finds Pussifer and where and how? Like, it's right. a fascinating thing to me. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, like I said, we don't really... go into it thinking of, like, how we're going to fit or or what kind of... Yeah. It's... it's uh, I don't know. And, and I feel like that makes us more creative because it's literally an anything-goes kind of thing. And, and as long as everyone's not like, yeah, I don't know... You yeah. Know, uh, then, then, it, then it goes, and if it, you know, I don't know. I, I think it's really a creative outlet for us. I think it's, it um, has its own voice. You know, kind of, kind of what you were saying about, you know, that there's a uniqueness to it. Um, you know, I don't want to say that it's, you know, it, it's just, it's its own thing. You know, and you put, you put three different spices in a, in a thing, and, and let them marinate organically and and you're going to get something unique i think and sitting in the middle of those two voices as well two very ethereal left of center voices that when combined goes perfectly together but are yeah. two fucking weird voices what's it like to be the person to to meld those things and how easy a process is that because it's one thing me talking about what maynard does but when it comes to Maynard and Karina and a vocal interaction yet again like there's no backing vocalist in tall like there's right. minimal backing vocals live with a perfect circle sure. but but this is fucking like 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's um, it's I feel super fortunate and really lucky to get to, you know, work with 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 the two of them. Um, you know, the challenge is is when there's more vocal tracks than there are tracks of music, you know, and and you're literally sitting there. With, <laughs> Does that know, happen with, often? Oh, it happens a lot. So good. Amazing. <laughs> You know, when you're sitting there with hundreds of vocal tracks and like, uh, how do I weave this together to, you know, to, 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 to make it work. And, um, you know, that's, that's the challenge, but, but again, it's, it's a really cool place to be, to be able to be creative and for them to trust you with, with what they've done, you know? Is is that where the role of producer changes as well? Because usually when people associate producers it's you know a, a kind of a, a, almost like a che- not a cheerleader sounds so reductive right sure. but like but like it's very verbal and in, in the moment as opposed to when it comes to hundreds of vocal tracks and pacing shit together like yeah. is it is that almost as much of the musical contra is that as much a musical contribution is right in the music itself. It, I think you have to know the music of Pussifer for what I'm saying to, to really make sense. But like you can guide a song with all of those vocal tracks and Absolutely. minimal musical accompaniment. And that's such a bizarre and unique thing Like yeah. as, the, as a listener, let alone as the person who goes, how did I get this to all make sense? Right. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, there's a lot of trust from them, obviously. Um, and, and this project doesn't really require a lot of cheerleading because everyone's got the discipline and everyone's got, you know, they, everyone's got that inner cheerleader that, you know, wants it to be great and wants to, to, to bring the best of what they can to the table. So, so there's very little of that that's, that's, that's required. It's like, you know, Karina jokes about it sometimes because she'll like lay something down that's just amazing, and I'll be like, "Cool, what's next?" <laughs> you know, <laughs> you got to remind yourself that you know, take that second, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so so we joke about that, but but uh, yeah, I mean, um, yeah, a a big part of of it is 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 putting putting the pieces together, and and sometimes you know, you'll get kickback of like, I really like that thing the way it was, or like, you know, this thing there, or, um, but that's just part of, you know, I'm the guy sitting in front of the computer with, with all the tracks. So, so I'm, I'm, you know, the one that's, that's gluing it all together, but, but everyone certainly has their, their, uh, their input on, on, you know, how it goes together. And so last, last kind of question I want to ask about the, the actual creative process is like, how does democracy work that easily, man? Like I've been in bands, I've been around plenty of bands in the last 18 years, like that level of democracy when it's like everyone trusts everyone to stay in their own lane. and At the end of it, we end with an album is a, a pretty fucking rare commodity. I think that we've all, you know, made enough music that we know the process and we trust the process and we know when to kind of pick our battles. And if, <laughs> if someone's standing up and saying, you know, I think this, then, then we listen because for the most part, everyone kind of sits back and lets each other kind of, you know, take control of their own thing. So if someone steps forward and says, I don't know about this, or I think that was better um, than, than we take, listen, you know, we, we definitely take, take it seriously and, and reevaluate. But um, I mean, we've, we've been pretty lucky. I mean, I know what you're talking about. And I've certainly been in those rooms where, where, you know, where you're arguing about the idea that you haven't put on tra- on paper yet, you know, like, yeah, nothing drives me crazier than that. And, and fortunately technology has changed where you can try things out, but you know, that's kind of, that's kind of my thing too, is like, let's try it. Let's not argue about it. Let's try it and let it speak for itself. You know, I think, I think it's, it holds way more weight because, and, and we've all, you know, been proven wrong. We've all been, 
you know, my idea is better. And you're like, actually, I hate to agree, but your idea is better, you know? Yeah, that's it. It's just being honest, letting the ego go and, and um, you know, and, and again, trusting the process. And so last question about Pussifer is um, if someone's not been convinced by Pussifer up to this point, do you think that this record uh, does anything that could convince someone that hasn't been convinced by Pussifer up to this point? Yeah, I mean, if you're if you're the guy at the festival waiting for the other band to to play, then you know, then 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 maybe you're not going to be into it. But if you're, I don't know, I I I I'm really happy with what we've come up with. I think it's it's um, I think it's strong. I think it's unique, um, but also familiar. Um, and I would you know. If you're looking for a heavy metal thing, I mean, I'm I'm intentionally not doing that, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, either either, you know, open yourself up and and check it out, or or you know, go somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. There's plenty of other shit out there. Yeah, Matt, exactly. Matt, was there a moment where Pussifer stopped feeling like a side project, like? When, because it, because it, like, uh, I always think that's a, a, um, a slightly derogatory term. Sure. Side, side project means, like, what? So I haven't put all of my time and effort into this, because I fucking have. Yeah, um, yeah. So, yeah, like, has it ever felt like that? Like, was there a mo- has there been a time where you felt that gear shift? Because it doesn't feel like, when I see Pussifer on the cover of Kerrang! and shit like that, it's like, well... This this doesn't feel like oh bless this is what he's doing until a perfect circle and Tool decide sure. to do something again. Yeah, I mean from the from the creative side, it's it's always been the same. It's always it's never been an afterthought. It's never been something that you know. It, it's when it's when it's going on, it's the main thing, and everything else is is on hold. So I think it's more that that there's more momentum. You know when there's when there's a freight train going and then there's this brand new, you know, uh, flower bud coming out of the grass, it's, it's a hard to, to feel equal, you know? So I think it's just, just years of, um, of creating, you know, um, a, a bed and, and then just, just more momentum. Mm. Like Matt, one of the, one of the few good things to come out of this last six months or so I I have found is I've really enjoyed some of the live streams and by that I don't mean people in their bedroom like playing some songs I mean some people of the live album has been dead for a while right like if I go to a show I can watch that show on YouTube by the time I walk inside my front door again right like but streams in this period, and particularly people like Behemoth and Nick Cave, who have yep. done things outside of the box. Now, your live show, I have seen fucking Mexican wrestlers and all kinds of shit. Yep. So, is a puss of a live stream a possibility, or is it a bit like... This is one of the few... Having interviewed the bun- all three of you uh, uh, over the years... Like, I genuinely don't know how any of you would feel about this because, it, it, like, I could imagine all three of you being like, live shows need to be live with people. But I could also imagine the, the sheer amount of shit that you can do with your art and aesthetics with this. It feels to me like a replacement for the live album could be extravagant live streams with creative visual ambition. Yeah, I mean, I think that. I mean, I saw it. I, well, I watched the um, the VMAs. You know, if you, I guess it was about a month ago now. Mm. And seeing the the extra effort that was put into the creativity, you know, put into the sets. You know, you're, I was watching yeah. the one, and I was like, I was like, wait, is that fiber optic? And I was like, oh, it's green screen. The whole the whole set was changing. You know, underneath like that that extra effort that was that's been put into the the creative side. I think is is super powerful. And I think for people to, you know, a, we're kind of forced to, to, you know, if, if you want to play a show, this is, this is really the, the, the main way to do it right now. And, um, and there's so many opportunities to be creative. And I think, 
you know, to compare it to a live show is, is not doing it justice because you can do so much more. So, yeah. Um, you know, we, it's not something that, that we're, that we're not talking about. Excellent. So cause I, I, it's good that you say that about shows because what I've been gabbing on to anyone who'll listen is like it feels like when stand-up comedians do their specials right they do their specials every couple of years you can go and see that person on tour and see the stand-up thing but every couple of years you get a here is the culmination of my shit of the last couple of years that yeah i'm i won't push any further because i know secrecy is high on all of your all of your agendas but that's a good enough answer for me, Matt Mitchell. Um, okay, uh, what are you working on next then? Because, uh, like, when you're like, well, when I have time as a premium, I create. We all got a lot of time at the moment, so I don't know how much time you've got. But what are you up to, like, post October thirtieth and this person for record being out into the ether? Yeah, um, hopefully preparing for for touring. Um... You know, that's that's kind of that's my wishful thinking is 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 starting to develop what the next tour looks like and what kind of, um, you know, how do we be creative and how do we do something that's not derivative of what we've done in the past. But, you know, you know, we like to do shows that are a little more than, you know, people standing up there playing guitars. So, um you know, putting a lot of energy and, and thought into what, what that might look like. Um, that's, that's kind of right around the corner. I would imagine at some point early next year, we'll start thinking about doing remix stuff because historically we've kind of done remix stuff for good, good for each of the records and just working with other artists and kind of getting other people's interpretations. That's always fun. It's always, you know, really refreshing to hear someone else's take of, of something that you've done. So, that'll probably be happening soon and then and then we'll see so i i'm glad that you're still busy despite the 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 craziness of it all one last question and i'll let you go um sure. when you say about uh the live show I, I, i'm like i say i'm lucky enough to get to talk to all of these different artists and um I, like i one particular chat with richard from ramstein really yep. stands out and that's when we write a record we write a record and we're kind of writing the stage show at the same time and yeah. because your albums come to life so much when the live show comes is it is the live show uh, part of the creative process when you're making a record or does it become its own entity after a record is done it's definitely they they definitely cross paths i mean they're you know about when the record starts to feel like its own thing, then we definitely start those, those discussions. And I think by the end, they're pretty tightly woven, you know, um, you know, we were talking about set design and passing, um, uh, you know, ideas around, you know, uh, um, yeah, back, I don't know, six months ago. So it's something that's, you know, that's definitely been, in the discussion as we were working on the record perfect all right matt and you can you can tell i mean i i i didn't know that i didn't know that specifically but but when you watch one of their shows it's like it's it's undeniable that that the two are connected the things are like those accented moments where the pyro hits or something happens feel too deliberate on a musical, but like, it doesn't feel like coincidence. Okay. We've got these accents. We'll put them in there. Feels sure. very deliberate. Yeah, for sure. Matt, thanks so much for your time, man. And Absolutely. like fucking anytime you've got anything going on, I love doing these chats, man. So thanks for your time. The record is out October the 30th. If you have not been into Puss for before, make sure you check out the other material before we get to that. The new record is fucking great. Matt, thanks for the music, man. See you soon. Yeah, yeah good to see you. Cheers, mate. Bye. Cheers.
Don't forget to like and share this video and join me on Twitch every Tuesday, Friday and Saturday for guest hangouts, new music votes, tier lists, band specific competitions, weekly merch roundups and much, much more. That's twitch.tv forward slash mosh talks. Find the link in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and I'll see you on notfest.com for all of the latest news, features and much more from the worlds of rock, metal and beyond. And...